My name is George Davis. I'm a professor of geosciences here at the University of Arizona. My field of specialty is structural geology and tectonics. These are fields that deal with deformation of the Earth's crust, pushing, shoving, extending, stretching. We are in the Basin and Range province. It's a magnificent province, a landscape province, a tectonic province, where tectonic means mountains and mountain building. It extends from northern Mexico through southeastern Arizona, southeast California, Nevada, western Utah, Idaho, southern Washington. It is a big place. And this particular domical mountain, just like the Rincons and about 25 other mountains we could go to and describe in southern Arizona and northern Mexico, northern Sonora, these are the mountains that are referred to as the Sky Islands. I mean, it's a magnificent term. So they go up into the sky, they come up from the desert floor, they're magnificent in terms of the rocks and the geology. In order to understand these sky islands geologically, you have to look back in time even before these rocks were formed, before these sky islands were formed. If we were to come to visit Flandreau back 60 million years ago, we say 60 MA, 60 million years ago, in that period of time there had already been formed a very profound mountain system. And mountain systems that are profoundly developed commonly are developed because of shortening and compression of the Earth's crust. So due to plate tectonics and the movement of ancient Pacific plates eastward relative to good old North America over here, it was crunch time, okay? And crunch time produced folding, shortening, faulting, deformation. And when mountains form through contraction, shortening, what happens is that this crust gets all wadded up. It thickens. When they get crunched up, you end up with a thick, buoyant, floating mass of material that just rises high. And let's go back around 60 million years ago again, 60 MA, right? And let's imagine that we have the Pacific Ocean, or at least the precursor, the former Pacific Ocean, and we have the former Pacific Oceanic Plate. That ocean crust was diving down beneath North America. And it was right at the, at the boundary between, oh, okay, I'll say it, the Farallon Plate, diving down underneath the North American Plate. This is where the crunch took place over tens of millions of years. It wadded up for a reason, and it's in with this, within this zone that you have the deformation that has shortened the crust. Then what happened, and I think what I'll do now, is just to suggest to you that this Pacific pre-Pacific oceanic plate started rising so that eventually it came in at about this level. And when it came in at this level, it basically poured tremendous amounts of heat up into this over thickened crust. Imagine you have this mountain belt that's running through what is now the basin and range. Basin and range didn't exist then. Rather, a big high plateau of the type you find in the Andes, the Altiplano, sitting up extremely high. And then, over time, this mass of material becomes overheated. It takes on a high temperature. And when rocks take on a high temperature, they become weaker. They become softer. So this big, huge mountain wealth that is hot and unstable is ready to do something big if it's given the chance. Well, it turns out it's given the chance. Enter the San Andreas Fault System that basically cuts this thing off, boom, like a knife. It weakens this boundary in this thick, hot mass of mountain belt. I'm not talking the Catalinas. I'm talking northern Mexico, 
southeast Arizona, Nevada, western Utah, the big, big picture, that huge mountain mass, over millions of years, it slowly collapses and spreads almost like taffy. Let's just for a moment pretend that it's now 30 million years ago. Since 30 million years, this crust that had been over thickened decided it can spread in the direction of LA, in the direction of the Pacific. It doesn't lose any area, but the crust becomes embarrassingly thin for ordinary continental crust. Maybe this was 50, now it's 25 or less. It stretched in a way that these their big faults that started to develop in this zone, and these faults can be seen today through it, but it's fancier than that. Let's think of this top. Let's think of this top. Let's think of this top. Let's think of this. And let's just drive a big pin right through here so this part doesn't move. Boom. There's the end of it here. What happens is that this part B starts shuffling down, rotates, and then there's another fault, and this part C starts shuffling down and rotates, and this part D starts shuffling down and rotates. Well, this is what we think happened. This stretching of the crust by 100, by 100 percent was along big, deep plastic fault zones. And the rocks were tilted in ways that we can now appreciate. Here we are, you might ask me, where's Flandro in this diagram? Well, Flandro is down here in the Tucson Basin, right here, and we're looking up at the Catalinas, and we're down in the basin, because these big holes had developed. Can I put some arrows on here? And these are basins, and these are basins, and all of this took place, we think, between 25 and 18 million years ago. Seven million years, in the blink of an eye, all of this happened. You can almost hear it stretch. And then what we, as geologists, refer to as the basin and range was just sort of the last pop. And that last pop took place at around 12 million years ago to about 4 million years ago. I want to say 4 because that's what we think it is. But if you want to see the basin and range part of it all, you kind of go right around the corner of the Catalinas. You go around Push Ridge, if you know where Push Ridge is. You go up to Saddlebrook. You go up to Oracle. And you can agree with me, there's this imposing western face of the Catalinas. You can't climb it. It's so steep. This is a basin and range fault, steeply dipping. These largely, widely spaced, high angle fault zones that took the top of the Catalinas and brought them down to a much lower elevation. If you know where the Tortolita Mountains are, west northwest of town, the Tortolita rocks and landscape was at one time way up here. And now it's way down here. Did it happen all at once? No. It happened earthquake by earthquake by earthquake over eight million years or so. You know, three meters here, two and a half meters there. Pretty soon you're talking about something. One after another after another earthquake and falding event. When we think of the term Sky Island, we should for a moment think about that word island. Mountains like the Catalinas are islands in a low basin desert area. To use island language, we use language like archipelago, like a chain of islands. 60 million years ago, this region was really high in elevation, and even 100% extension couldn't drop the level of the land below sea level. It almost got there, but it didn't get there. So we have the Sky Islands beautifully exposed here in ways that aren't exposed anywhere else. We can walk into the Sky Island along corridors like Pima Canyon and Sabina Canyon. We can see the guts of these mountain systems. So 
That's, that's the story on the Sky Islands, admittedly from a geological perspective.